Welcome to Transmissions, where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third-party Transformers. On this episode, Robeson reveals another robot, Magic Square has another Legend-scale Dinobot in the pipeline, and Hasbro's War for Cybertron Omega Supreme finds new life as a Guardian robot. Today is Wednesday, March 8th, 2023, and this is episode 528 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that for almost 10 years have been, has been going on and on about how much we love Transformers, but we're secretly all Ninja Turtles fans. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team, Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how's it going? Creator, producer, and star of Empire of Rust, editor Mike. Cowabunga, dude. And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hello. Let's talk Transformers. Or Turtles. <gasps> Who knows what we're going to talk about tonight? <laughs> we talked about those third-party transforming turtles a while back. We're, we're talking about Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> As always, we start off the show by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who support us on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you all so much for continuing to help us out and keep the show going. We really appreciate it. If you are not a Donatron and would like to become one, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. That's where you can sign up. Uh, if you, uh, you know, you, we have lots of different perks. You get bonus content. You even get some merchandise at higher levels. And, uh, you know, it's a way to help support the show and also get, you know, be, get some, give you some perks. And, uh, you know, we tell you we love you every week. So, you know, it's a good deal. <laughs> Personally, I, I love each and every one of our listeners. <laughs> we all do. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. And viewers. Yes, yes, yeah. all three of you. <laughs> um, we're not doing too well on YouTube, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> talk. Speaking of that bonus content, what about that awesome show that Daryl and Doctor Pants do? It's called We Like Big Bots. So uh, Daryl and uh, Daryl and Dr. Pants talk about some big ginormous transformers. They've got 10 episodes talking about different bots. Uh, more is coming on the way as soon as we can get Dr. Pants back on camera. Anytime now, Dr. Pants, <laughs> we, we know we, <laughs> we know you're having issues, but we, we want you back, man. We miss you. But uh, as, soon as, as soon as that happens, we'll make more of these big bots happen. Uh, Daryl, uh, what, what do we got so far? What's, what's, uh, What's uh, in the list there that people can check out right now? Oh man, we've got uh, we've got some uh, some J- Jetfire, some Scorponok, some Overlord, some Power Master Optimus Prime, some Metroplex. Metroplex. Yeah, um, yeah. There's uh, oh, we did a Predaking one and a Devastator one, so some combiners in there. Um, what else did we do? Um, six shot. So there's uh, that's a few of them there. Uh, we did we did Cyclonus. Might not be the biggest bot, but uh, he's got a big personality. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so definitely a, a good chunk of uh, of characters there. Um, a lot more on the on the evil side too. If I if you kind of look at it there. Um, yeah, more, more evil big bots so far. So maybe we'll have to do some, some, some goodies on the next, uh, the next chunk. Decepticons aren't necessarily evil. <laughs> but the ones you covered are <laughs> very, very bad. Yeah. Yeah. They do yeah. bad things. Yeah. All right. Well, those are all linked on our Patreon page. So if you are already a Donatron, you will have immediate access to them. You can watch them whenever you want. 
and uh, we'll have a link in the show notes to get to all 10 of them. So you can just go right there and, and li- get links to all of them. Uh, also, we've got our awesome Transformers Live Play RPG podcast, Empire of Rust. This week, we have the bonus episode for uh, the bonus exclusive access to the early bonus episode for uh, Empire of Rust episode 97, Assume the Party Escort Submission Position. So uh, you can check that out if you are a Donatron right now. It's already, I don't get already it. have access. What's that one? <laughs> you got, got to ask Mike. <laughs> I couldn't believe when I learned that that neither you nor Charles play Portal. That's that's shameful. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. thought I thought we were friends. Yeah. I mean, when it came out, I was I was pretty busy chasing girls, so I I I didn't I didn't have time for video games at that point. Uh, so. I, I I think you were already married when Portal came out, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you were still chasing girls, I guess that's Don't fine. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> Portal's not that old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't play a lot of video games. But yeah, that's uh, that's one that I I've heard of it, but uh, I've never played it. It still holds up. To what? Like it's a good game. I mean, it's a good game. That's what that's what holds up means, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> what are some we comparing games, it to? Some games just look bad over time. Portal does not. Okay, so Daryl offered his excuse. What's your excuse, Charles? Too many games, not enough time. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Portal's like a 15-hour game, if that. Okay, no find me. <laughs> Portal two takes longer, but you don't. You know, just stick with Portal one. You're fine. Like, right. still it's on play. the list. You know. Somewhere, somewhere in my gaming backlog, it's on the list. <laughs> Let's bump that up a couple of dozen spots. Anyway, we, we, we should chip in for Charles's rest. birthday and get it for for Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Empire of Rust. Heard of that? <laughs> <laughs> Another game Daryl uh, hasn't heard of. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, so we got the we've got the bonus episode ninety seven out this week. The regular version of episode ninety seven will be out next week. So that's at transmissionspodcast.com slash rust. Also, if you got episode ninety six last week early. You should go download it again because uh, there was an error and some of the sound effects were not added in and we uploaded a new version. So check that out. The episode 96, if you want to get the full experience, download it again, listen to the whole episode and enjoy. Yeah, I had a couple of uh, voice actors come in to to, to do the voices for uh, a bunch of the characters who were in there. And I... I I messed it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I put up the, the the version without voiceover artists. So, you know, I got to give a, a big thank you to uh, a former co-worker of mine, Brandon, and and uh, his actual, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% certain if they're married or not. I don't think it ever came up. So, girlfriend slash wife, uh, Georgia. <laughs> and uh, Apollo also voiced uh, Windblade in that episode, too. So, cool. Yeah, a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of people, and I felt really bad that they didn't. Uh, they they their talent wasn't shown. Well, now it is, so it is up there. So, everyone, make sure you take a listen. All right. Well, that's uh, all our intro stuff out of the way. Let's jump into some toys with quick hits. All right, and first up this week, we are talking about Iron Warrior IW-07 Leader. And this is a third version of Transformers Prime, Optimus Prime. Uh, and we've got our prototypes of it. This is an interesting one for me because I can't, I can't think 
we've seen a third party Transformers Prime figure before. And obviously they're going with, you know, Optimus Prime here. Um, now, this is a non transforming figure, which is a total shame because what a cool design this Transformers Prime, Optimus Prime is. And we do know that they're capable of doing this figure in a transforming figure because that's what the first edition figure was. It, it was a gorgeous, you know, uh, uh, Voyager class figure that was a, capable of transforming. Um, they've just they've taken that that design and they've sleeked it down quite a bit and and uh, and you know just uh, just made it a little bit more um, articulated, I guess. It, 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 just they've given it a little bit more of a third party touch, um, more a little bit more like surface detail and whatnot, uh, probably made of uh, higher quality materials. But uh, I really wish that it would uh, transform uh, because that design was just amazing. Uh, so yeah, there it is, Iron Warrior IW zero seven leader. Right. Uh, next up, we have uh, the next self-transforming bot from Robeson. This is their G1 Bumblebee. And this is from their Instagram. They were at the Middle East Film and Comic Con uh, event recently and had this on display. And I believe they are, I think they're coming to TFCon. So it's interesting to see if, if they'll have it there. But, um, but this is actually a non transformable figure but self-articulating. So uh, apparently there was a patent a couple months ago that shows it. So I'm guessing it's just going to be more of just a robot and not not like the Optimus Prime, which is a shame. But, I mean, it, it still looks good in terms of, you know, it, it's G1 Bumblebee. It looks like G1B. Um, but, yeah, I, I really wish it would be self-transforming, but this way they probably don't have to deal with Volkswagen. Yeah, I mean that also the proportions on the robot. I mean, it looks Yeah. It's it's looks much much better proportions as a robot, but if they had to make that thing act into an actual like VW bug, I don't think Earth that would physics work. Physics comes into play. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, we don't have any mass shifting in real life, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> Uh, all right, and what I have here is uh, some new images, uh, gray prototype images of Magic Square's sl uh, slag slash slug. Uh, very, very G1 accurate. Uh, this is in legend scale, so yeah. Uh, of course, this is just gray prototype stage, so this may change uh, over time. But yeah, it's it's looking nice and it is very car very cartoon accurate uh so if you are looking forward to these uh these figures or the, the dinobot figures uh keep an eye out because we should be getting some uh some more prototypes coming soon okay and next up we've got Clackies, which is a company that makes custom mechanical keycaps for keyboards and, and custom, they make custom mechanical keyboards and have done some uh, officially licensed artisan keycaps in the shape of Transformers faces. So we've got Noptimus Prime, Megatron, Bumblebee, Starscream, and Soundwave. So you can get these for your mechanical keyboard. They can fit over any of the keys on your keyboard. So these, I mean, I first looked at these, I thought these are pretty cool. Then I looked into the story and like, um, you can get a set of three for $99 or Ooh. the complete set for $150. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're cute. They're not that cute. <laughs> yeah. I, I would bet they have LEDs on them, but. Oh, I, unless they have solid gold in them, I don't think they're worth that price. <laughs> I'm just imagining pain of your fingers having to. Ninety nine U.S. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the picture has them over the function keys, so you probably never touch the function keys. So I use really the function rarely. keys all the time. <laughs> well, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> F2 rename. <laughs> what if you don't have that type of keyboard? Yeah, I think it's specifically for their branded keyboard. 
Yeah. So you got yeah, got to shell out for the keyboard, Daryl. <laughs> if you're if you're in if you're in for the keycaps, you got to get the keyboard to go with it. <laughs> I don't know. It, it might be a standard. I think the keyboard, the keys for mechanical keyboards are actually a standard. But yeah, th- I mean it's it's nice to see uh, Transformers merchandise getting out there, but uh, this is this is a hard <laughs> pass for me. <laughs> yeah, they just, I mean, is is. Hasbro just giving like Transformers license to every everybody that's asking for it right now. Like, I want to I want to see like more crazy crap now with Transformers. Yeah. Like, I mean, show me not, the bump. Show, back show the me 80s. the the Starscream condom. Like, <laughs> 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 knowing this fandom, that would sell. Yes, it can, would. <laughs> can, can we get a license? <laughs> I I think I think you have, have to have, have money. Product. Yeah, you have well, to yeah, pay. you have to. Actually, I don't think you. I, I, th- I think if you have money, you figure the product out later. <laughs> you just buy the <laughs> license. I don't know. That's business. All right. Well, ne- next up, we have uh, some more rumored products coming up. This is from. Uh, TFW and their user JT Prime 17. And these listings that they found have um, there's a special edition Optimus Prime, a retro perceptor, and a, repto, a retro shrapnel. So uh, I'm not sure about the Optimus, but obviously these are probably G1 re releases for perceptor and shrapnel. Uh, we've seen perceptor a few times, I think, already. I know I have a re- reissue of that. But the Optimus Prime is, you know, I'm wondering, is this going to be a G1 with some special stuff in it, like they did with the, you know, like the DVD release and stuff? Who knows? But, you know, looking forward to seeing what what they come out with. Next up, we have uh, first some first images of the Walmart reissue Thundercracker. Uh, with a new movie accurate uh, like head sculpt and deco and uh, a kind of a really neat looking box too. Like the artwork on that is pretty cool. I kind of like it. Uh, and there's a, also a new accessory for the for Megatron, uh, Megatron in gun mode. So if you have a Walmart near you, then these should be coming out at some point soon. Uh, I don't see the actual date on it, but yeah first look at uh, on these so if you're interested in picking up a reissue seeker they'll be coming out soon okay and we've got the buzzworthy bumblebee origin jazz figure is up for pre-order at target uh, I don't know if it's still like this. We recorded this on Sunday. So by the time Wednesday comes around, will this still be available? I don't know. So the I know the Hasbro Pulse uh, offering sold out really quick, but Target was as it was was still going and it's still going as of this recording, as you can see. So uh, if you want to, your origin jazz, you can pre-order at Target. And, uh, you know, I don't know wh- uh, uh, when it'll be ready, but. Should be probably, you know, within a couple months or so. So, uh, yeah, at US $25. I've already ordered one. Got one for Daryl since he's in Canada. There's no targets in Canada. So I got picked one up for him. (laughs) I am Um, ordering one right now. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah. So hopefully Jeremy doesn't get the last one. And these are still available if you are, if you are looking for origin jazz, but, uh, Looks like this is going to be a little bit more, e- a little bit easier to get than Origin Bumblebee was, at least at initially. So, you all remember my uh, well, if you if you watch the show, you remember my uh, sad story of Origin Bumblebee from a couple of years ago. But uh, hmm. it event it, it it eventually became plentiful for a little while there at, at Target, so you could pick it up off the shelves. But so hopefully, Jazz will will be similar. Will you be able to get it pretty easily? So that'll do it for our quick hits. So let's jump into our main discussion topic. Okay. And we're going to talk about the announcement of 
a new Titan figure, and that is basically a recolor of an old one, which is Generation Select Titan Class Guardian Robot and Lunar Tread. This is a recolor of the Omega Supreme into the colors of Guardian Robot, and they are selling it on the Hasbro Pulse uh, site for one ninety nine ninety nine. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's for, if anyone's interested in troop building out there, this is possible. It's pretty, <laughs> um, <laughs> God, go nuts. <laughs> yeah. Troop building this, Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> I'd like to see a diorama with, uh, with like five or six of these in there. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, this is available. Um, so, anybody, do, do any of you guys n- uh, have or not, sorry, not have Omega Supreme? I have never I owned not. a single Omega Supreme. I do not. Wow. Okay. So, the Omega Supreme is actually a really good figure as far as Titan class goes. Um, does it being available here in, in the, you know, guardian robot colors, does it interest you at all? Or is it the fact that it's not Omega Supreme? Does it just kind of kill it for you? Charles. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I would, I would much prefer the Omega Supreme colors. I probably wouldn't, would pass on this, especially like a Titan class figure. I don't, I'm, I'm not getting the. The variant color for a Titan class figure, I w- I would want the original. But um, also, is the is the price the like the, when Omega Supreme was out a few years ago, was it at one fifty? Or I don't think it was at I don't think it came out at two hundred for retail price. Well, things have changed, Charles, and the, you know, involved. there's been a <laughs> pandemic. I don't know whether you heard about it, uh, and the uh, the <laughs> prices of everything went up. I can still complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it, it, it they've all gone up. Um, I mean, you guys complain about it being uh, two hundred bucks, and and DJ Ronan's mentioning it in the chat that two hundred bucks for you is is three hundred and fifty dollars for us. So, um, and that's not even that's not even you know uh, conversion. That's just outright like highway robbery so um it's it's ridiculous but um and Jeremy, saying what are that your there's, there's a new um you get the new little minifigure in there but too o- omega supreme came with that minifigure it came with countdown oh, did? didn't it yeah well this it's is a repaint figure. it's a repaint yeah. now so it's different charles but it's a repaint of the figure that came with Omega Supreme, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jer- okay, Jer- we're adding we're adding the paint. This? Uh, I I'm a fan of Omega Supreme, even though I've never owned a figure. But I'm also a fan of blue colored figures, apparently, because I think he would look really nice next to my Ultra Mammoth. Mm-hmm. I, I never had oh, a big convoy, but I have Ultra Mammoth. So I'm not opposed to getting the the recolor of a figure. So this would be really interesting to get. Although I still have my Titan Trypticon that I've never opened, <laughs> and this I, I worry that this would go that the box for this would go next to the box for that <laughs> because it just takes up so much space. But it, it is interesting. It is something I. I would like if it weren't the two hundred dollar price tag, which I, don't know, I have. I have better uses for two hundred dollars right now in my life. And and Mike, this is uh, this is a wild generation selects figure. There's a potential for this to go up in value considerably. You know, after the uh, the the supply runs dry. Um, you know, do you see this thing and and think, okay, well, I could buy it sit on it and and sell it for four times the value later on or is it just too of, of an obscure character for that i feel like this is a personal attack <laughs> i well i'm asking the question that's what i'm doing 
So, no. I... So... First, I will say that I actually really do like that this exists. It's a really obscure figure. It's just from what those two or three episodes of G1 that that featured some Guardian robots in it. And they were just kind of big throwaway characters in the first place. And I really do love that they made this. Uh, I also, I'm going to actually echo you, Jeremy, because I really do love the color scheme on it. Like the white and the blue is incredibly striking. And I really enjoy that. That being said, it is $200 <laughs> and it is a Titan figure. So it's, it's pretty massive and pretty expensive. It's going to be a pass for me, certainly, but there's a lot that that's appealing to this that I do like. If money and space were no object, I think I would pick this up. It's just that right now, yeah, it is money and space is, is not, you know, it's not infinite. So. It certainly would be a pass for me. Uh, I do wish that they included some extra accessories or included some extra things to at least make me feel like I got the extra money's worth. I mean, if you're right, Charles, and this was 150 when it came out as Omega Supreme and it jumped up uh, about 50 bucks here, it's like I, I really would want something else to to make me feel good about this. Maybe some like uh, ex like some accessories or some weapons or something like a like weapon pack or something. Maybe an additional uh, like little minifigure or something like that. I mean, again, like fifty is fifty bucks is is not an insignificant price increase. Yeah, it's one hundred and fifty dollars to two hundred is a thirty three percent price increase. We have not had a thirty three percent inflation in the last three years. Yeah. So. Hmm. But yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts on it. I wish there was you guys more. Won't get any sympathy from me? I'm sorry. Because <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, Canadians have to pay the insane shipping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, Daryl. This will be a Target exclusive. Uh, this this as being Generation Selects, there there's a slight possibility it'll end up here at GameStops. So. Assuming GameStop is still in business. <laughs> oh, it's 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 doing quite well here now. So okay. yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's doing quite 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 well. Um, now, Jeremy, I sent you a link in in Discord, but uh, I I wanted to uh, mention something quickly because we were on the topic of Omega Supreme and these uh, you know Guardian robots and whatnot, and I'm pretty sure that this story came out this week about uh, this next one, and this is the um, the New Age H53 Michael figure. And we may have talked about the figure before because I know we, we, I definitely sure we talked about it, but the price of this figure came out this week. And this thing is, it's, it's ridiculous. This thing is, is more expensive than the Omega Sentinel that we just talked about, the Guardian robot that we just talked about. This thing is $339.99 and the Guardian robot is 200 bucks and this thing is a legends class figure. Legends class. What is happening here? Well, this is, has die cast in it. But yeah, that that's ridiculous. 11 inches tall. This thing is 11 inches tall and $340. What that's is ridiculous. happening? with new age here. Now we had, uh, there, I, I kind of watched this story develop over the week that big bad dropped their price of this thing at this insane price. And, uh, people were saying, okay, well, what's show Z store going to, um, going to drop theirs at. And, and I'm just going to bring it up real quick. I didn't, I didn't really, this wasn't even on the topic list for today. I just kind of, saw this all kind of develop and I thought, well, this might be a quick little fun discussion, but um, as I bring it up, I'm just uh, just going to find the price. Where is it? There it is. So, you know, the full price is showing as unknown right now, um, but uh, I think I saw it. Somebody had posted it before. Um, well, it was significantly less. Chosen Prime has this one for 250 Oh, well, there you go. 
<laughs> Who knows? And that's and that's another North American site. Right. What the hell is happening here? Um, so New Age is definitely doing something with their pricing, but what the hell is happening at Big Bad Toy Store uh, with some of this stuff? They, I don't know. They could be overpricing and then planning to drop it. You know, maybe they aren't sure exactly what the cost is going to be, but that's just giving them benefit, benefit of the doubt. Wolfwood is also saying that Toy Dojo is also 250 Right. That's a little bit more reasonable, but still, it's a lot of money for an 11 inch figure. Still $250 yeah. for a, a, a foot tall figure. It's, it's legend scale. This is ridiculous. Uh, this is where legend scale has gone. Charles, you started this with getting us all into legend scale. <laughs> so, I hold you personally I was, responsible for the. I was not the- consulted for this. <laughs> <laughs> New Age did you not got, get my approval for the, for this product. <laughs> you got the hype. You 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 boosted you boosted Legend Scale right from the start, and <laughs> and I blame you. I blame you for for where this has gone. Um. Anyway, I didn't want to harp on this too much, but it's 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 this has gotten ridiculous. So, um. Let it be known that uh, Daryl at Transmissions is very upset <laughs> with where the pricing of these legend scales are, and that and that is all I have to say about that. Driving you back to mainline for cheaper product. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> DJ Ronan says that the tank does move on the track. Uh, does that mean it's motorized, or just that it? fits into like a groove or something. I mean, I can hold it with my hands and I can move it along too. It'll save me a hundred bucks. <laughs> I mean, I mean the original, the original G one Omega Supreme was motorized. That was a, that was a big selling point. So yeah, that's, it's not two fifty or $340 price point. So we are the DJ Ronan and Wolfwood are saying it is motorized, so maybe that's where all the extra cheddar is coming from. Not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't Jesus another third stinky. party company do a Omega Supreme? Like a kind of like a legend there, scale, but more like a Yeah, Daryl has it. I got it right here. Wage. Who is that? <laughs> Yeah, is, uh, who's that from? Oh, Weijing? Yeah. And I thought uh, this, is, and it was right. not, this is really good. And it was it's not really $250. <laughs> no, this I think it was 80 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Damn. It totally works. So, yeah. How old is Do that figure? Do more of this, Legend Scale. <laughs> well, I don't know. When did I get this, Jeremy? What It was TFCon oh, Chicago a few TFCon years ago. TFCon Chicago, the one before this last one. So, 2018? Sure. 19? Something around, around there. there. Because yeah, we went back because I wanted to get it and they were all gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this works. More of these, please, Legend Scale pe- companies. I just did a quick search on um, BBTS and uh, was it DX9 has a 23 uh, inch uh, Omega Supreme figure for 220. Well, okay. It's, it's, it's 280, but it's, it's on sale for 220. But still, over That's double the size for for the same price. But is it motorized? Uh, <laughs> die cast and LED lights, but not motorized. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there you go. <laughs> <sighs> I think it's safe to say that we will not be picking up that uh, that third party Omega Supreme and looks like not this Guardian robot <laughs> from Hasbro <laughs> Pulse either. So, but uh, if you are if you do have the money to army build with that Guardian robot, please contact Daryl and uh, send. We, him we some want pictures. pictures. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all our toy discussions. So let's move on to trips to the store. The Transmissions Podcast will return after these messages. 
All right. This week, of course, Trips to the Store and every week is sponsored by our friends at T Public. So you can check out our merchandise at our T Public store, transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. Uh, you can buy lots of cool stuff, lots of shirts like I've got on here. Daryl's got his bad guy shirt there. Jeremy's got uh, his uh, hoodie. Sound tape man hoodie, not sound wave, yep. not sound wave. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, all these shirts are available at our T Public store. Of course, you can buy anything from T Public uh, through our link, and that will help out the show. So go to transmissionspodcast.com slash shop, and that will take you to our T Public store. And you can buy anything from T Public at that link, and it will still help out the show. So if you're looking to shop for some shirts at Tee Public or any other merchandise, uh, please use our link. And look for the sales. Uh, there are sales happening very frequently, uh, every you know, couple every month. So uh, make sure you get uh, take advantage of those thirty five percent off sales that Tee Public runs very frequently. All right. Well, let's talk about the stuff we got this week. Uh, unfortunately, I got nothing. So I'm um, I'm drawing a goose egg this week. But uh, I'm not going to stop the fun, so we're going to hand it over to Jeremy. All right. Um, I don't have anything new again. Um, but And the fun stops. <laughs> <laughs> no, but <laughs> continuing my theme from last week where I showed off some Transformer Prime toys, I have a couple more, although, um, let's see, I'm, this one, I'm not sure if it's actually Transformers Prime or... A little bit later because the, the wiki said this was from 2012 War for Cybertron, which it doesn't look like the game. So I'm not entirely sure. Or no, this is from Robots in Disguise, which was the Transformers Prime line. Now that I remember. Yes. Transformers so, Prime, Robots in Disguise. Yeah. yeah. So this is just, it's Cliff Jumper who had like, you know, 20 minutes in the show <laughs> and he, he got multiple figures, but The Rock, uh, he's voiced by The Rock. Yeah. That's all. That's all they could afford in terms of the, <laughs> the rocks' voice work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a good figure. Um, it, it's a a basic figure. I, I need to pull out my um, first edition zombie cliff jumper. Uh, but you know, th- this was this was fine. This was kind of the the lower end, you know, of the line at the time. And then I also have my Optimus Prime, which kind of goes in with what we were talking about earlier. Um, the design, like the look of the Optimus Prime was good. This I don't this figure wasn't the best. This wasn't the first edition one, I don't think. But it did have if you get the right hand here, this mech tech weapon thing that they did. Um, that never really it's got a light on it, but never really stayed like that it always would come back so doesn't really look that good like this i wish it could stay extended but in terms of the optimus itself he looks good uh once again the first edition ones are are much better um i don't know if i ever got a first edition of this but uh prime was such a good line such a good show so that's all i really was All right, uh, Daryl, we're coming to you. All right. Well, I uh, I had to chase this down because the uh, the place that I pre order my figures at uh, uh, lost it. Um, they, uh, I went in and I just questioned about uh, the you know the existence of this, and they said, "Oh, well, it's it's not on your list." I said, "Well, it fucking was." <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, after cursing them out and beating one of them to a pulp, um, uh, they said, we, we can get you one. Don't worry. We'll get you your toy. Um, no boss, Mr. Daryl. No boss. <laughs> so, um, they, uh, they had to, uh, they had to get one shipped in from Toronto for me, but, uh, I finally got myself a tarn. Nice. And uh, I o- I opened this guy up because I wanted to mess with him so badly, 
and uh, he's fun. He's uh, he's a fun figure to mess around with. He poses really well. I got to say, I'm going to critique him a little bit because uh, he is he's quite good. But um, I I want to I want to say that if you're you're looking at him on like like this. There is no definition to this figure at all. He is flat as a board. He's got no butt. Uh, he's, he's got no robo butt. He's got he's got no no chest. He's got like there's no backpack. There's n- nothing at all. Like uh, I mean, he's got a cool. He's got a little bit of a backpack, but there is there is nothing going on on this figure. It's uh, you know as far as like you know the way it it kind of looks on the uh, from the side. And uh, I just I wish there was a little bit of definition. Um, it's the same problem that I feel that uh, um, the uh, the Titan Devastator has. It's a big figure, but if you look at it from you know any kind of side angle, there's really nothing going on. And uh, and and I just wish that it had some kind of like give it a bit of a like pectorals or so, like something, some kind of definition to give it. I don't know a profile. And, uh, but all in all, if you look at it from the, from the straight on, it's awesome. It looks fantastic. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a fun figure to mess around with. And, uh, yeah, I'm having a good time with this guy right now. Um, so you got like, yeah, I wish, uh, yes. Yeah, there is. Uh, where's my little thing of a bobber? Oh, he's right here. I do have a light here. See if I can get it to go. It's not going to work real well. Yeah, maybe. There you go. Know. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So it works. But uh, yeah, he's a cool figure. And I mean, Tarn is just awesome. Um, I got to say, I mean, I've had the Mastermind Creations one for a long time. Uh, the Mastermind Creations one is still better. Uh, this is a mainline figure, so it has to conform to mainline rules. Uh, so, you know, it does lose, uh, it does lose some points on, on having to, to hit those marks, but, uh, for a mainline figure, this is pretty kick-ass and uh, it's fucking Tarn, man. Like it's awesome. But, uh, the Mastermind Creations one is still better, but that's what I got. And I'm very happy with it. Send them to the gym, work on his, his arms and chest <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and butt. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mike, we come to you, taking the anchor back, position. Back in the anchor position like I belong. Feels like I never left. <laughs> so, Daryl, I'm actually going to share something with you on this one, because I also got my tarn in yesterday. There you go. And I will agree with you. He is a little bit of a skinny boy, but mm-hmm. that's okay. Uh, I'm not going to be looking at my figures from the side. I'm going to be looking at them straight on. So straight on. Yeah. Yep. I approve. I pre-ordered him when he came out back in, shit, what was it? November? October, November? Yep. And yeah. So very glad. But since you already talked about him, I'm not going to spend too much time on him. What I am going to show off, though, is one of the big pre-orders that I've had for probably like a year now, and I'm super excited to get this figure. This is the, uh, I'm going to mispronounce it, of course, Terra Leone's Nemios, Nemio, Ice, Is, Nemiosis, Nemios. Perfect. <laughs> 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 and it is the Planet X of Victory Leo. And this is an amazing, amazing figure. Absolutely beautiful. It's got uh, some like I'm, I'm hoping it's not real gold, you know, gold metal, <laughs> gold, like uh, gold plastic or anything. But it it definitely has that like beautiful like, metallic sheen to it. Uh, and yeah, it is just just beautiful looking. Uh, I cannot gush enough about this figure. I really loved the uh, Cadmos, the Star Saber, when they put it out like years ago. I picked that up relatively soon after it. Uh, and even though I have not actually put these two together yet for a Victory Saber, uh, I am planning on to this week at some point. And, and yeah, it is just a, a beautiful looking figure. Uh, transforms pretty nicely. Transforms pretty solid. It does have that little bit of like kind of like lying down, like on your front, kind of like wide shouldered, like front legs, just because you know like they 
that's where his his lion leg shoulders are. But there's tons of articulation on this. Uh, the figure is really solid, really stable in its lion mode. It's got the spaceship mode too, but you know, whatever. It's a spaceship mode. It's a block. That's all it is. But yeah, absolutely beautiful figure. Articulation, everything on all of the like the weapons and all that too. Uh, you can kind of see it the little like sharp parts up here. These are separable, and will actually combine with uh, Cadmus's sword to make a giant like giant sword. I think it had a name or something in the show, but I don't remember it. A saber, and if you will. The victory <laughs> saber. Maybe. Uh, it did come with uh, like the big massive cannon that it came with. Uh, and it comes with a whole bunch of like little extra pieces, um, like replacement stuff for, for Star Saber. I'm assuming for like stability and to help. Uh, get everything connected properly. They gave a, a new a new head for the the victory saber mold that you can switch out as well. So lots of of lots of stuff on this, and lots of like really neat uh, pieces and and things to this. It is a beautiful beautiful figure, though. I love it. Cool. Nice. I want to see pictures of it. I want to see pictures of it combined. Sure. All right, well, that's all our trips to the store, so let's move on to the next section. We now return to the Transmissions Podcast. All right, next up, we've got convention news. And we have some TFCon LA toy news. Uh, first up is the customizing class figure. It has been revealed, and it is based off of the fans project Columpio and it is creating G2 jungle warrior. Um, so this is a pretty nice looking figure here. Um, I'll make a jungle themed Dinobot, And yeah, one day I'm going to get into a, a customizing class, but since I'm not going to TFCon LA, this is not that day. Um, the next thing we have is a um, an exclusive figure for the convention. This is get the right angle here. Uh, this is Fans Hobby MB One Three B Boss Man. It's going to be limited to six hundred pieces worldwide and released at TFCon beginning on March tenth at a price of eighty five dollars while supplies last at the chosen Prime booth, and then. Um, I imagine it's going to be available at fans hobby or like at retailers shortly after. I think that's what they usually do. Um, this thing looks pretty good. Uh, Daryl, uh, what do you think about this? Since you, um, you're probably more familiar with this mold than I am. Yeah. So, um, I don't have this particular mold from, uh, fans hobby, but I do have the figure that it's based on. I do have that original, uh, boss figure, the, uh, the G 1.5, uh, Euro, Euro exclusive, uh, figure. And, uh, um, it's a very cool figure. It's kind of, uh, you know, colloquially known as the, like the, the Transformers Batmobile because of the, the, <laughs> just that, that the turbine. It, turbine. Yeah. In the front. Um, it's, it's interesting to see how they've kind of just jerry rigged a little extra piece onto the front of this thing to kind of make it into that, that figure. Um, but this is, this is a, a very popular figure. The price is right on it. This is going to sell out. So if you're thinking about it and you can't attend, um, and you can't get somebody to mule it for you from the show, um, <laughs> be on the lookout for, uh, for one of those, uh, retail partners, to uh, to post this thing on their site after the fact because right, uh, it's gonna go, line. yeah, it's gonna go and it'll all six hundred will sell, so uh, it will end up the weekend of the show. It will be on eBay for twice the price. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's if sell, if not more, it's gonna sell out at the show within the first hour. I'm sure. At yeah. The, like the price of ninety dollars. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna sell quite uh, quite quickly. So, yeah, the uh, 
So you want to uh, definitely make sure that you're able to pick one of these up if you want one. Uh, Charles, Mike, do you guys have any uh, comments on this figure? I do love the the look of it. I, I'm not going to be at TFCon LA, uh, but I mean, this is a, a beautiful looking figure. I, I do have to ask though the the weapon, like the the like engine weapon thing that's there, is that just like a separable piece? Like, it, it looks like it, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You see yeah. It, it's like the handheld gun here. Yeah. Well, actually, oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess it is. Hmm. It's really like, can you scroll down just a little bit? It's really interesting the way they, they integrated that into the, the design. It feels very natural. It doesn't feel like it's just tacked on, which I really like. It's a, a lot of attack, a lot of detail attention paid to that. So that's, yeah, good on them. I, I really like that. Charles, you have any thoughts? Uh, it's a cool looking figure. Um, is it a headmaster too? I, I'm not familiar it with, like uh, I think it was it like one of the junior headmasters. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I do like, I do like how the, the turbine fits over the car because it look the car looks nice without the turbine, but it, the, it, when it fits over, it does seem to naturally go with the the rest of the car so it doesn't look too out of place when it's there so i think they did a good job with that uh, yeah it's a good it's a good looking figure and dk running says based off of ace hitter which is the best of the junior hit masters so. cool cool Okay, well, uh, that's all the convention news, so let's finish up the show with some feedback. All right, uh, first up on YouTube, we got a comment from DMC2008, who asks, Have you guys ever done tours of your display shelves? I would absolutely love to see you guys walk us through your collections, perhaps a Patreon exclusive. Keep up the good work. Uh, I don't think we've done that. Well, Daryl, Daryl does it every day, every t- every every episode. <laughs> um, and Jeremy, yes, Jeremy too, and Mike. I think I'm the only one who's uh, who's <laughs> shy about their collection because I don't have it nicely displayed. Uh, but uh, I mean, that, that is a good idea. So uh, you know, we'll we'll think about that. I, I think yeah. I think I think everyone except me has something nice to show off. I don't. I think I have to Mr. actually. Unicron. <laughs> yeah, Unicron, seventy-five inch TV, you know, <laughs> gaming console and everything. You got you got a lot of nice stuff to show off there, buddy. The TV and the gaming console, now, you don't, they don't don't count, right, Daryl? They don't count. Do they? It's not is not trips to the store. He wants to see your setup. He wants to oh, see okay. uh, your. What uh, right. you know? You got a collection room or whatever you want to show. I mean, you're not touring your house, but you know, if you got a, everything in the same room. All right. Well, we'll we'll think about it. Thanks for the suggestion, DMC. Also, the rest of you would write in, and if you're interested in actually seeing this, then you know, let us know. Yeah. Okay, and our uh, next bit of feedback comes from Gabe. Gabe, long time haven't haven't heard from you in a little while, but Gabe, uh, it's good to hear from you. Uh, he put us a me- put a message up on the Discord, and uh, I th- I think Gabe is out in L.A., so he might be going to TFCon L.A. Maybe this he, maybe he this is why he's that. asking. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, Gabe asks, uh, was wondering what are the etiquette and or unwritten rules for doing a parts party in your room? Uh, I'm going to pass that question to Daryl. <laughs> Me? Um, oh, boy. Um, I mean, it's just, I mean, for, for a parts party, you just kind of, um, it's gotten a lot more, you know, streamlined in the last few years especially at tf cons you just uh the tf con will put up a board so you bring a little sheet 
especially if you, uh, you know, you kind of have any, a bit of an idea of kind of the stuff you're selling. So you can put a, put that on the sheet or you can just have a, a couple smaller sheets. Like you take a, a, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, you, you fold it into four and tear them up. So you've got a bunch of smaller sheets and then you just, you basically just write your room number on that and, uh, and then just post it on the board and maybe post a few of them around the hotel as well. Just well, to, and, you know, and if you, if you think about it, you could make a post on social media and you can use a site to make a QR code out of that URL, but include that. So people can just scan it with their phone and they get all the information. Yeah, and I mean that's just if you're, you're so <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy's thought a lot about this. <laughs> yeah, I'm just remembering what worked. I, <laughs> so yeah, so I mean that's for getting people in your in your room, um, and then um, yeah. So I mean that's get, getting them into your room is that's that's the first hurdle. Um, now setting up in your room, we've seen some, some really, you know, uh, elaborate setups where pe- they basically move almost all the furniture out and they just kind of set up the, like it's a like whole a new store in there. And it's, uh, it kind of, kind of defeats the purpose of, uh, of doing the, the, the parts party because they're kind of getting around the rules of the convention. Um, but the, uh. If, if places start doing that more, you are going to see an end to the parts party. So really, let's not do that, anybody, anymore, people. Um, but uh, you just kind of lay the stuff out on the bed, multiple beds if you've got them. And then uh, um, maybe if you've got a little shelf that you can bring and put up, then that'll help too. Um, yeah, just kind of make it kind of welcoming and easy to a- access. And then sit in the corner and count the money that you bring in. I would say one thing, um, be aware of your neighbors, uh, you know, especially when, as it gets later, keep the volume down. Yep. Especially if you find out you have some of the like voice actor guests or, or other guests that are around you, you, you don't want to make the convention miserable for them. Also put on pants. <laughs> we learned last time. I think that's optional. <laughs> but it, it, i think the main thing is just be fair be willing to haggle you know, just, yeah it, it's about having a good time yeah and if you're going to visit parts parties i mean charles had this you know charles was really good at this with the last one we went to charles always had his wife on speed dial to call her and say, hey, I need to get out of this room with penises all over it. Can, I, I'm just going to talk to you for a minute. Sorry, guys, gotta go. Um, and you got out of the room with all the, you know, with all the dildos on, in it. So, uh, you know, have the, have an out. Uh, sorry, Dar- sorry, Dar- I didn't know you had to be there with all the dildos. I didn't know you had to, you, you were dragging us to the rooms with all the dildos and you needed to be there. I'm sorry. I Sorry I left you hanging. I hope you enjoyed all the dildos. <laughs> Not as much as I could have if you were there. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we tune in for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one last thing I would uh, say is if you are going, and uh, um, we're going to have a convention channel in our Discord. So you can publicize it there and let people know. Or if you're looking for someone to go to parts parties with you, you know, a good way to... It's always more fun if you're like a group of three or four people just going to all the parts parties. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the discord that we, the little channel that we set up, uh, usually helps pretty, pretty well. We always limit it to the people that are at the show. Everyone else can kind of watch what's going on, which is always fun for us who are, uh, you know, the sad sacks. I can't make it, but, uh, you know, for the people that are at the show, they're the only ones that can talk to each other. So you're not always have to navigating through everyone else's comments, which is a pain in the butt. So, yeah. Yeah. Put, put 86 movie or Beast Wars or something on the TV. Make it entertaining. I want people to come in. <laughs> so, you know, put the 86 movie on, not Beast Wars. <laughs> or Prime. Prime would work.
<laughs> Thanks for the question, Gabe. <laughs> Enjoy TFCon, Gabe. Sorry yeah. we can't be there with you. If you make it back out to Tor- Toronto this year, maybe we'll see you there. So I thought we, we also um, have a couple other people. I know John Quirks, Love and Good's going to be there. Mm-hmm. Oh, at posted, TFCon LA? Yeah, he posted in Discord he's going to be there. Oh, cool. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, that's it for all our feedback. And that takes us to the end of the show. So, as always, we give a shout out to our Masterpiece Donatrians at the ever- end of every episode. These are the folks who continue to support the podcast at our highest level on Patreon. And we really appreciate that. And that's why they get a mention in every episode. So thank you once again to John 4X Levengood and Demon Tech 82. We really appreciate your support. And Mike, thanks again for coming back and hanging out with us. Anything you want to plug in addition to the always excellent Transformers live play RPG podcast, Empire of Rust, but anything else uh, you want to tell us about? Uh, on social media all that good stuff certainly you can go ahead and uh give me a follow on instagram at minervian m-i-n-e-r-v-i-o-n if you want to see some toy photos that i put together i've been a little bit better about getting them posted uh lately and yeah some good stuff uh going up there aside from transformers figures i also do photos of uh the old, old lord of the rings figures and occasionally G.I. Joe and Star Wars stuff that I have uh, lying around. So, yeah, it's a fun time. And, of course, give Empire of Rust a listen. We are almost up to episode 100, our centennial episode. Looking forward to it. Okay, everyone. Thanks for watching and listening. This will do it for this episode of Transmissions. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. Later. Thank you for listening to this episode of Transmissions. If you'd like to join the conversation, travel to our Discord channel at transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. Want some cool transmission swag? Feast your eyes on our transmissions gear at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. If you'd like to support our podcast, Go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support or tell your friends about our show. We'll see you next time.